Greetings and welcome to the lecture on the development of the DNA and RNA vaccines in which we will discuss the history, design and development of vaccines as well as the regulatory processes involved in vaccine design and development. This is a preview of the lecture and is intended as a summary. In today's lecture, we'll be learning about the different types of vaccines, how vaccines are designed, the developmental procedure, as well as the regulatory processes involved in vaccine development. Upon completion of this lecture, you should be able to describe the process of vaccine design and development and apply it to a specific type of vaccine. Now, among the vaccine type, the vaccine type will be described in the first case, we will go into the process of vaccination and the WHO definition of vaccination, which is a process of stimulating the immune system with an infectious agent or components of an infectious agent, modified in such a manner that no harm or disease is caused. We will then delve into a brief history of vaccination, in which case I will highlight various elements of vaccine development as well as the important development stages in the history of if you have a detailed overview of the process of vaccination and the development of vaccination from perspective i have given you a link and you can click on the link in your respective slides we will then delve into the cox postulate and the recall of cox postulate and then into the general approaches to vaccine production. Now, in the general approach to vaccine production, I will present you with a generic overview of vaccine production, which involves the culture of the live virus in either cell lines or in embryos, chicken embryos, in the process of release of the antigen, the process of purification of the antigen and removal of all the accessory components, and inactivation and formulation of the antigen as the case may be. Now we will be looking at an adjuvant and the different types of adjuvants used with vaccines as an example. And we'll be looking at the scale up of vaccines in bioreactors. Now among the different kinds of vaccines we will be looking into are the live, the killed and the attenuated vaccine. And I will be discussing live attenuated vaccine inactivated and recombinant antigen based. We will also learn about subunit or conjugate vaccine and their design and development. In each case, we will look at the advantages and disadvantages of vaccine and have a Jamboard discussion during the lecture. Among the vaccines, we will be looking at the plasmid based vaccines, which can be cloned in E. coli and purified. These vaccines are their rapid deployment and developmental process, as well as the cost, the low cost. However, they have certain disadvantages, which we will discuss, including the presence of endotoxins and the antibodies, which may be elicited against the DNA itself. We then move on to the RNA vaccines, which you are, you are all familiar with. Most of you may have received an RNA or been administered an RNA vaccine. Now, in RNA vaccines, I will delve into the design and development of the RNA itself, the synthetic gene construct, the purification of RNA, and the process of generation of the RNA in vitro using an RNA polymer. We will discuss the disadvantages and advantages of RNA vaccines, and we will have a general discussion on. Now, the viral vector vaccines are referred to as Trojan horses. We will be looking at the adenovirus vaccine and how this adenovirus can be designed and developed to carry a host spike protein, a coat protein demonstration in the host. So we will look at the adenovirus in general and the genes which are responsible for elicitation of the immune response in the host and the spike protein which can be used to substitute the adenoviral spike protein. Regulatory processes in vaccine 
design and development are an important component of vaccine design. Now, as a biotechnologist, you must be aware of the timeline for vaccine development, which include the exploratory stage, the preclinical stage, the clinical development, regulatory review and approval, manufacturing and quality control. We will also look at the four phases of vaccine development, which we will discuss the various parameters such as the number of volunteers for patients and parameters which need to be measured during the process of vaccine. So we look at the three phases and we look at when an FDA will approve a vaccine. And in the case of COVID, we will discuss emergency use authorization of vaccines and medications. Now, in Malaysia, the National Pharmaceutical Ag Regulatory Agency is responsible for the release or the approval of pharmaceutical compounds in Malaysia or pharmaceutical formulations as the case may be. For those of you who are interested in a career, I have provided a, a link to a database on companies in Malaysia with clinical trial facilities or these companies employ students with who want to undertake a career in clinical trials and testing. So that brings us to the summary of this introductory lecture. The lecture will be conducted over a period of two hours and we'll have a discussion in the lecture session as well as a discord based exchange of ideas. Thank you very much for watching this introductory video and I look forward to your presence in the lecture. Thank you.